Hello, this is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video we're going to go over Playwright test assertions. On the screen, you can see that I'm on the Playwright documentation on the test assertions page, and immediately on the page it tells us the Playwright test uses the expect library for test assertions. So if I click on this link, it'll take us to the Jest documentation, which is going to give us all the methods that we can use to assert against which is coming bundled in with our Playwright test package uh, because it's using this expect library. Now, it is worth noting that these assertions are synchronous. So what Playwright has also done is extended its assertions with some convenience async matches that will basically wait until an expected condition is met or until the timeout is reached. We call these web first assertions. Okay. Jumping into Visual Studio Code then, let's play around with some assertions. So you can see I have my basic test open at the moment. Uh, I'm going to add some new lines. I'm just going to comment this out right now because I just want to talk about the simple expect assertions. So you can see I'm already bringing this in from the Playwright test module. And we're going to do a really simple one that comes directly from um, the expect libraries. So we'll say expect true to be falsey. And all this is saying is we're expecting the Boolean value of true to be false, uh, which we know in this case is not actually true, and we should see a failure. So let's run this uh, Playwright test and see what happens. Okay, so as expected, we see that it failed, and the reason why is error expected received to be false, and the received was true. So we're saying expected received to be false. Now, one thing I want to touch on is we can add custom messaging as well. So if something does fail, we can add a message saying expected to be true, but was false. And if I rerun this again now, we should see this message pop up on the failure to tell us, just give us that little bit more information. And you know, this can come in handy when you're doing more assertions. And if you don't have a very clean uh, error message pop out straight away after the failure, then you can add your own custom ones. And you know you could use some interpolation and you could pass through values. So here we've got expected to be true, but was false. This error message works fine. This assertion is a valid assertion. However, when we write in our playwright end-to-end -end tests, as I said at the start of the video, these are not typically what you're gonna use. You're gonna wanna use the web first assertions. And that's what this example does here. So let's uncomment this and delete this simple assertion. And we're going to focus on uh, line seven here where we're saying, you know, expect title to have text. Now this to have text is one of those custom web first assertions that's being created. And essentially what it's doing is it's going to retest the node called title. So this locator that we found, it's going to keep retesting the title selector to see if it has the text of playwright. And only when it has the text, or if it times out, is when it's going to finish and move on to another line of code. So we know this is going to work. But if I was to change this to boo and run the test now, we're going to see it's going to fail. But what it's actually going to do behind the scenes is it's going to wait that default time of five seconds or whatever I've set in my config, which we'll talk about in a little second. So of course you're not you're not going to actually see anything, but behind the scenes this is actually going to keep looking for title. Whereas if we just use the simple expect that's not uh, the extended asynchronous method, the web first assertion, then it's just going to finish instantly because it hasn't found it and not retry anything else. So you can see here is it's trying to find it with the timeout waiting that five thousand milliseconds. And it still hasn't found Playwright because it doesn't have resolved to it. And then it's uh, failed the test. If I just change that back to Playwright, of course, the test will pass. And behind the scenes, if Playwright isn't immediately on the page or they can't find it on the DOM, or this title locator doesn't have the text of Playwright for whatever reason, it's going to keep retrying it until we hit that timeout. So there we got that pass, and that's great. So I touched on the config values. Now you can set the default value inside your config. So I think if you don't set it, the default would be five seconds. But if I decided to change this to seven seconds inside the expect timeout, what you'll see now without me changing anything else, all of my, uh, my web first assertions are gonna wait that seven seconds. 
So let's change this to fail and we'll run it again. And where we saw last time that it was waiting five seconds, it's now actually going to wait the seven seconds. So we, we have complete control over this in, in the configuration. So that's failed for there. And if we scroll up a little bit, you can see the expect to have text with timeout is now saying uh, 7,000 milliseconds, so seven seconds. And that's coming from the value we put in our config. We also have the option to change this inside um, the options parameter as well. So if I hover over to have text, what you're gonna see is any of these kind of web first assertions have the option to override the timeout. So if I wanna cut it down or, or make it larger, I can do it this way for that specific assertion. So if I add timeout as an option and I say, let's just do it for three seconds. I'm gonna rerun the test now. And what you're gonna see is for that specific test or that specific assertion, um, it's going to only wait for the three seconds before it times out. This still means if I have other assertions on the page, it's going to default to the, uh, the I think it was eight, uh, seven seconds that I put in the Playwright config file. Okay, great. And if I hover up now, you can see that uh, this has waited three seconds instead of the default of seven, because I specifically said in this, in this one line of this waiting for the title to have the text, only wait three seconds and of course you can play around with that and you can set that to whatever value you want and having this kind of functionality uh built into player it is how they can advertise you know having this kind of resilient um non-flaky test because it's giving you complete control but it's also trying to resolve to whatever you're expecting and saying it doesn't matter if the web page has any issues or your app has any issues or it's got some slowness for whatever reason we'll try and wait until you tell us that you want to time out we can also do the opposite we can negate matches as well so if you want to say okay i don't want this title to have the text or something we can just say dot not and then this will allow us to say title should not have the text of fail in this case it doesn't so if we run it now we should see that the test passes Awesome. So there we are. Because we added the not then, it turned the assertion into the opposite. It means that test has passed. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Great. So awesome. What I want to talk about now is polling. So in Playwright, you can actually convert any uh, synchronous expect assertion to an asynchronous polling one. And that'll be using a built-in method from the expect library um, that Playwright have extended. Um, and it's called the poll method. So what the method will basically do is it'll poll a given function until it returns your desired outcome. So we'll write it up and then we can talk through as it goes along. So let's just add a comment saying polling. And we said it's going to be asynchronous. We want a wait, expect. If I do dot poll, there we are. We can see that. That's going to be asynchronous and it's going to create take through a function so let's do that so we got the arrow function there and this is where now inside here you could write you know whatever you're expecting your actual to be so you could do const title and then return the title um, and then assert against that but in this case i'm just going to say return true so it's always going to return true and we're going to see some failures on it now after the function here we want to say what we want our expected assertion to be so i'm going to say to be and I'm going to just say false so it actually fails for us. Um, now, under the hood, what's going to happen is this is going to loop over this method and it's always going to return true. And we're going to wait either until our default timeout, which we set in our Playwright config to seven seconds, or it'll wait until this returns true. In this case, it's always going to fail because, you know, we've hard coded both the expected and the assertion to be a mismatch. Now. The polling method does offer some cool, you know, smart functionality under the hood where it doesn't just keep hitting, you know, the assertion every time. As this assertion gets longer, it's going to get slower. So you have the interval. So the first interval might be, say, 100 milliseconds. And then the second one might be 200 milliseconds. Again, slower and slower. So it's giving, it's giving you more time to assert against this. So it's not going to be making 100 requests banging in um, very quickly against this assertion. So I'm going to do mpx playwright test and hit enter. 
and we're obviously going to see a failure because we've um, asserted against it but it's going to wait that seven seconds now which it wouldn't do normally if we just used you know a wait expect true to be false and that's because we pull in with iterating over each time okay great so there we are expected false received true we knew that was okay and here you can see it's it's timed out with that seven thousand milliseconds now like i said let's comment that out and just prove um how this is working so we can't get too much just keep that and i'm just going to do the exact same i'm going to say um to do expect true to be false i cannot type today cool so it's the exact same assertion but we're not pulling on this and we know this to be comes directly from that jest um, expect library, no, nothing else added on like we did with our web first assertions. So we'll let this run through and what we'll see is it won't wait that seven seconds anymore. And that failed instantly and you can see here went very quick and that's because we're not using polling and this isn't a web first assertion. Uh, just like before as well, we um, added you know, these custom timeouts up here and we can do the same in the polling option. So let's uncomment this. Now, what we can do is we can pass another object inside here, which is going to be all the values you want. So I could say I want the timeout to be, say, 10 seconds, that's the 10,000. Um, we talked about intervals, so I can specifically say what I want the intervals to be. So I could do intervals, and I could say on the first attempt, 150 milliseconds, the second attempt, 250, third, 350, and then enter after 450, and then it go through like that. So I, if you know you have, say, a slow request, say a slow API request, you could say, okay, the first one, I want it to wait two seconds and then go a little bit, up it a little bit more each time. So it gets a little bit slower and gives you more chance to go through. So if I run this now, awesome. it's going to fail again because, of course, I've done return true to be false, which is never going to work. But now we should see timeout has increased to 10 seconds. Uh, but also behind the scenes, the intervals are now 150, then 250, then 350, and then 450, which is really good. And it'll keep extended on from that, of course. We're going to wait the 10 seconds. Brilliant. So you can see here, it waited 10 seconds and it failed because of this. Of course, if I change the assertion now to say true, it'll pass OK and everything will be fine. Now, you might be thinking, when will I need to use this? And it's going to be times where you can't use these kind of web first assertions. A perfect example is maybe an API request where you want to check the status of a document. Now, you might want to see a status 200, but the API request might take a second or so to come back. Um, if you use the basic to be true without any polling, then, or to, well, to be status of 200, I should say, without any polling, then, of course, it's going to cause problems. But using this method, you're keeping your test resilient and you're giving it that extra time to uh, pass or fail. Now, you can also set timeout to zero as well. And this will pretty much create that kind of infinite loop view. It's going to keep trying to get to the status of true or whatever you've put the assertion to be. Um, obviously, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's something anyone should do. I'd always kind of set the timeout yourself or let it take the default timeout from your config. Then the, I guess the last thing I want to show you is something called soft assertions. So by default, playwright assertions will terminate your kind of test immediately on failure. What soft assertions allows is for you to um, run through a test. Your assertion might fail, but it doesn't terminate at that point. It'll continue the test execution. But if you do have a failure on your soft assertion at the end of the test, is when it'll mark the test as failed. So let's go into a little example of this. I wanna delete the polling up here and we know this is gonna pass, which is great. So let's say we wanted to have the text to fail. So we want that one to fail. And I'm now going to say expect.soft, which is that soft decision saying, if it does fail here, continue on, but at the end of the test, I want to be marked as a failure. So at this point, we're saying, okay, nav bar title, um, what can we do? Let me have a look at the web page on my other screen. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's click the get started. So await page dot locator. Uh, we've got the text 
of get started. So I'll just say get started. Uh, dot click. Awesome. And then I can say await uh, another expect of say title to have text. And we'll say we want it to have the text of play right at this point. So let's say to have text down here of playwright great let's save that so what i'm expecting is this test to actually get to this part of having the text of playwright because i've said i want this to be a soft decision so i want it to check if it fails or passes but don't x don't complete the the um, execution here so don't terminate the execution of the test here i want to say carry on and go to the um line eight and then tell me if the test has passed or failed based off this assertion. Of course, this assertion, if this one was to fail, it failed immediately because we don't have that soft uh, method added onto here. So let's kick this off and see what happens. And tell me what, we'll put it in headed mode so we can actually see the execution, see, and it click that get started button as well. Turn that over. We're going to play right dev. See there? It clicked to get started and then it's done the assertion. So we know we went through to this point, but look, it said here it's failed. And the reason why is because it went all the way through. Obviously, the word, the text failed does not appear in this title locator. However, it did continue through. But look, mark the test has failed and actually picks out, you know, where it failed on this soft assertion. Before I kind of end this video, I want to stress the importance of using the documentation as well. So it's really good to use. And, you know, if you get if you get any kind of concerns or you're stuck with anything I've talked about, put a comment down below. But I would stress as well, go into the playwright documentation and just having to read through and trying to see, you know, how you can work your work your own solution out. Um, as always, I appreciate you for watching. Like I said, if there's anything you want cleared up or any questions, please leave a comment. And as always, a like and subscribe is appreciated. Have a good day. Bye-bye.